Welcome to Open House NYC. Today I'm coming to you from a chic full floor residence in the heart of the Flatiron District. This 100 foot wide home features luxurious details like a granite clad fireplace, custom millwork and white oak flooring throughout the vast entertaining areas. An open plan living, dining and kitchen area is perfect for hosting all year round, especially with its south facing terrace that lets you take the party outside. In all, this home is nearly 5,000 square feet of true downtown splendor. We are starting things off in the bucolic town of New Hope, Pennsylvania for a rare look at the live-work property of the late great George Nakashima, one of the most influential designers of the 20th century. George was a leader of the American craft movement. He was also an architect, an artist, an innovator, and humanitarian who spent much of his life building what is affectionately now called the Nakashima Compound. His daughter, an architect and designer in her own right, takes us on a tour. I'm Mira, the daughter of George Nakashima, and we are in New Hope, Pennsylvania. Welcome to the Nakashima compound. My father loved this place because it was called New Hope, and he chose it to start his furniture business and raise his family. My father started building on three acres of property here in 1946. He built the shop first and then the house. As he needed more space to do different things with his furniture business, he kept on building more buildings. And he loved to do that because his original profession was as an architect. And I can't wait to show you the rest of the property. This is the Conoid Studio. It got its name from the unique geometry of the roof. It's flat on one end and round on the other, and because it needed to be two and a half inches thick, the engineers added the sine curves at the back and the tie beam in the center. This form and its engineering allowed us to have this tremendous unsupported interior space, which inspired my father so much that he designed a whole line of furniture he named after the building, so they're called the Conoid line. This is a prime example. It's a dining table designed in 1960, and the tabletop is of very spectacular English walnut. Over here, we have an adaptation of a traditional Japanese room. It has the tatami mats and the sliding paper screens, which are called shoji. In the centerpiece, we have a redwood root burl, which is spectacular. It's free form, has all kinds of holes in it, and the base is called the Arlen base, which was a series of lines that my father did towards the end of his life in the 1980s. This is a Clara Walnut Root Burl, which my father made as a demonstration piece for his last show in 1989 at the American Craft Museum. It came home from the show just before he died in 1990 and demonstrates the fact that he was not just an architect or a furniture maker, but he was also a conceptual artist. I worked with my father for 20 years, and after he died, uh, we tried to keep the business going. Uh, we continued to design and make new pieces as well as those that are traditional. And this particular piece was inspired by the story of Sadako, who tried to fold a thousand cranes to cure her radiation sickness in Hiroshima. And the angles of the seating is based on the same angles as the origami. After all, this is a design studio, and it's where I do my work and where my dad did his work before me. And now let me show you where we make some of our pieces. Our chair department. All the parts here are shaped and uh, made on the big machinery in another building, but they are all assembled here by hand, and my father believe that we should retain the relationship of man's hands to his living spaces and as a protest to mass production. We still use hand tools as my husband is over here. Before we leave, I would just like to point out the shape of the ceiling, which is a mock-up of the Konod studio next door. <laughs> 